This morning, Sunday on the radio, 10 to 11 a.m. Let's mark and sing there, they've got a morning show. Every day I listen in. We're going to talk about what's going on. Good in morning, town. everybody in Montgomery around. County. Uh, we are broadcasting show. live from Conroe, downtown Conroe, with all the other jury. Can I uh, have a people. shout out to our fans in Papua New Guinea? Oh, Cindy, they well, are writing in, and it's just, we, we'll read from their newspaper it's, later. It's amazing. Uh, we try to stay local, but we just can't. We're you forced. Can't. We're forced to go global, and we have to do it, it you know, because people are, are, are clamoring for us everywhere. The Mark we, and Cindy show. If we could put on those internet blocks, they would never be able to get us, but no. That, is, got, that is true. Uh, and uh, we have so many people listening in. Uh, today to hear our guest that we have today uh, that's going to be Derek Sinkfield and those that are watching this on YouTube will see that uh, we're talking around him he's sitting right here he's in right, the studio yeah, yeah. and uh, but we're gonna well he, we're gonna bring him on a little bit later but we have to build the audience because we everybody's trying to. to get to the 10 they're o'clock bailing. and they go like no they're not bailing these I'm people sorry. are coming <laughs> on because he's got so many friends and family and members and people out there they haven't seen you for a long time or heard from you and uh they're coming on to uh, to listen so we'll uh we'll get started in just a little while because uh derek's going to enlighten us and we're gonna fight with him okay no we're not no we're not no fight this is a very uh calm oh we're so calm open, cindy very open <laughs> show i'm excited about you know it. how yeah, exciting I this know. is cindy actually bought me some coffee i mean this isn't cheap stuff that's two dollars and so many cents and I'm just pleased. It's because Derek, and uh, it's, um, wow, how well, exciting I'm, is that? I want to make sure you're really charged up for this uh, interview oh, we're going to no, do. Oh, no, I'm just interested in what crazy. Derek has to say and all. Hey, and, uh, you know what happened today? Uh, I got Samuel and Cindy, my grandson and granddaughter, to school so early that the women that open the teachers that open the doors for the kids as you pull up looked up to see if they were seeing pigs fly. They go, Cindy, we never <laughs> thought you would have these kids here these early. Kids? Usually I'm like the... I said, run before the door closes because they've all gone in and the doors are starting to close. But uh, they were so proud of me and I was really proud of myself. Boy, I would, yeah. I, it's going to be on the front page of the paper. Uh, uh, probably so. And uh, the thing I w- meant to say yesterday, I, I left right before break and said, okay, and I'm going to talk about this when we get back. And I couldn't remember what it was I was going to talk about. That happens sometimes to me. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. I try it's to help, age. but Cindy, I don't know what you're going to You know, it's about not age. Now. I have so much in my head That's to think true. about. I think that's what it is. You have to forget something every time something new visits, and you're forgetting a lot of stuff that I think is important. Okay, if we keep talking, I'm going to forget what I was going to say. Exactly. Go ahead. Go Um, with it. You're going to forget your guest, too. (laughs) Really? No, no. He's he's waiting patiently for his time. Uh, But uh, we are on YouTube, and uh, you guys can go there and watch us do this thing instead of just listen to it. And it usually will be on, like the show we're doing today, will be on YouTube by Friday. It's really whenever I want it to be on. That's what you should tell the listeners. Oh, and, and then they can you call know, me if they have a problem. I'm trying to boost your PR anyway, no. and so uh, well, have, the rule the, the rule of thumb <laughs> is is the way the way YouTube works is the archives itself will be available around one o'clock the same day on SoundCloud, the and, audio, and on the app on on demand. Right. Because we now have an on-demand feature on the smart Android and Apple device. We are getting cooler and cooler by so you can the listen day. To the most recent Mark and Cindy Bye. show that way immediately, just the audio. Yeah, just the and audio. And then the YouTube video, I'm going to do my best, just depending on. Well, you know, once they wa- they listen to that audio and they hear our guests and they hear the interviews, they can't wait to see what this person looks like. I agree. What, what happened? You know, the face slapping and all the stuff that goes on during the show. Did I mention but, I lost my phone? Yes, I can't even find my phone, Cindy. Go ahead. I ordered a new one, but uh, you know, Office Space is calling you. That guy with the red stapler. He sounds just (laughs) like him. You listen to. I don't get it. But uh, anyway, the the cameras that we're using don't have fish eyes. It's like whale eyes or something. The way it 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 can capture so much of this room, and to do that, it has to you know this 
this um, lens just takes everything and spreads it all out. So if it wasn't bad enough that TV puts about 15 pounds on you, this now has enlarged it. But I'm excited about it, Richard. I love it. You know why? It's because when I go out in public, if people watch this, I go out in public, they go, you look so much smaller in person. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I don't know, because so they're, thank you. they're in full 1080 HTP or whatever, so you're, you're pretty much on there. Cindy, we I'm all over it. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm forever. all over In the that. camera, the technology, words like apps and uh, uh, the other words uh, Dick said, <sighs> they're fascinating. I want to ask you a question first, Mark. Your, sorry to interrupt you. But uh, what kind of size phone, nine. What kind of phone did you order? Did you get a flip phone again? Uh, no. Uh-oh. No. Uh-oh. But Uh-oh. what I did Uh-oh. get, it's something like this. And I bought a policy, $4 a month for when you crunch it, because my other one, Derek, <laughs> I crunched. I mean, I dropped it. You got a policy. And it even had a cover on it, Dick, and it hit and just went whoosh. And so I bought a policy now, $48 a year, just to, I can take it back if it breaks. What kind I'm of phone sure. is it? You don't even know? Can you download the the uh, the app for your radio show? I don't know. Uh, Kay ordered it for me. She does stuff like that. Kay, I call don't... in. Tell me what kind of phone you got. <laughs> Kay, so we, yeah, yeah, because you have to bring it up here. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hell's freezing over now. I, no, Kay will call. <laughs> the pigs are flying again. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so what happened me, locally? Locally, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, straight from the uh, bowels of the ver- ooh, uh, bowels oh. of the uh, Conroe Courier. I was looking at stuff today. I hear a rumbling. What? I know, and there's so many interesting things going on. But one, I don't know if y'all read uh, uh, Mark Dennison's. He's with the First Baptist, Second Baptist, one of those Baptist places in downtown Conroe that's mm-hmm. really big. And he puts this stuff in information. Listen to this information. And then at the end, Cindy and listeners, he has a twist that I think is really good. Do it. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I was waiting. Uh, Even the brightest of the bright can say dumb things. For example, Thomas Edison, speaking on the phonograph in 1880, said it is not of any commercial value. Uh, In 1929, just days before the plunge of the stock market, this guy named Fisher, economics professor, said stocks have reached what looks like a permanently high plateau. He goes on to mention this, and then he says this. Uh... James A. Garfield, he was a president. He served about two months before he was assassinated by an office seeker that Garfield apparently promised him he'd get a place somewhere. But anyway, Garfield's killed. Nobody knows that or knows the name of the guy that killed him. But uh, here's what he says. Uh, He says the people are responsible for the character of their Congress. If that body be ignorant, reckless, and corrupt, it is because the people tolerate ignorance, recklessness, and corruption. And I thought, okay, that's great. And then he says to this, this is what Mark Dennison says, come to think of it, Garfield has it right. If you don't like the people in office, maybe you should look in the mirror. We are who we elect. See, he's turned it on me now. I am responsible. Well, anyway, I think that's very powerful. Was that fair to say about the presidential election? Because it's not really us doing that. Oh, that's it's it's electoral college. You're right. But in 99... How does that work? It works. It, there has never been a uh, presidential election that was the Electoral College voted different than the people did. There have no, been a few people who voted different, but it didn't alter. Well, he's just the telling election. me to look in the mirror and blame myself, but I can't. It's not me. I know you can't, Dick. I know because you are God's gift to what you call your humanities. <laughs> but listen to this. There is stuff going on. There is. Cindy, did you Derek, did you know this chair exercise? 10 a.m. at the Friendship Center in Lake uh, Robinson. You've Road. never seen Sit and Get Fit? No. On PBS? Or you've never I seen those was, classes? You know, you're lifting chairs and you're, or you're exercising chairs. Mark, you're just, we're getting close to that age where that may be the next oh, way to get fit is you sit in the chair. and But they just came out with a study that if you sit in the chair uh, too long, it's worse than smoking. Well, you should have listened to yesterday's show with the guy from 40 Plus Fitness. We're going to have him on I as a guest. Should. Are we, we? got to have him on as a guest. I told him. He does it by it. a compression workout. He does it with air. Son of a gun. I got plenty does of Does he smile? Because when he came in, I said, hi, yeah, he, he didn't smile at me. I we're That's one of the chair exercises himself. is smiling. And I, I'm thinking. But that is, uh, that's what they do. Holy smoke. An eating disorder support group. Who disorderly eats, Cindy? What is that all about? That's a good point. That's a good point. Derek, how's your eating I need, life? Is it? Uh, I, I eat well. You don't look oh, like I it. Do. but uh, Oh, well, thank you. Thank he's you. very well he fit. He is he's fit. fit. He's, he's fit to be tied if we don't hurry up and get yeah, to we his, get to his yeah. part. But, I work uh, out. 
He does. <laughs> hey, do you work out? <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> no. I left my daughter. That's, a, that, that's oh, my, okay. the extent that's, of my that's, workout. That's so many happen. stuff. Yeah. There's vandalism on a golf course, wood f- forest, creek. One of these golf courses. Folks, grab the Courier. It's in the Courier. Ba- Wolf Forest. There's vandalism golf. going on? Somebody drove their car all over the 13th, 15th, 16th uh, uh, green, and I don't know why. Uh, Man, but vandalism. What strikes a person? That's worse than throwing their clubs. I've done that before. Angry. Well, Dick does it, yeah, but uh, wait a minute. He's God's gift to humanity. Why do you do that? There's a joke. Is, you know how you can win a hole-in-one, you win a car? So I got to drive on the golf, drive oh, the car on. I was like, I've never been able to get to do this and be legal. Yeah, You're crazy. I guy. hope that we're not. I hope that we're not influencing Richard oh, all uh, around the to world. Uh, say fabricated things. I, you know, no, it's true. Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking about when you go to like a tournament and it's like yes. hole in one. You, you see the truck. I got right. to drive the truck where where you see it. So I got to drive onto the green because you have to go on the green to get to where you, you know. You drove a truck on the green. I thought they lifted it and let, because no. they're so worried about their greens and stuff no. that that was. Holy cow. You're so you know, lucky. Yeah, I'm the, telling you, I, I was having a ball with it when they go, who wants it? I was like, me, 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 me. <laughs> anyway, uh, so many things going on. And the good news is when we come back in just uh, a minute or so. I'm going to be talking so much less. We'll be listening to Derek, and uh, I am so interested in what this young man has to say, and uh, it could uh, save lives if uh, whatever Cindy has to say at all. We'll have to see. We'll see. You're listening to the Mark and Cindy Show from Lone Star Net Radio. Right now. And coming up will be Derek Sinkfield. Sinkfield. Stay with us. And this is Roxette. At Jazzy Junk, volunteers reclaim, restore, and recycle. Jazzy Junk is a nonprofit resale storefront where you will discover wonderful, unique finds at very affordable prices on furniture, antiques, books, art, home decor, and more. When you shop Jazzy Junk, you support New Danville, a community for adults with developmental disabilities. We receive new donations daily, so plan a visit to Jazzy Junk today to find that perfect item or gift. Our motto is here today, gone today. So remember to hurry in and shop often for the best selection. Jazzy Junk is located in the outlets at Conroe on Leak Line Road and I-45 North. Call 936-441-4500 or visit our website jazzyjunk.org that's J-U-N-Q-U-E for more information and store hours. Let's go to Luke in Buck, Texas. <laughs> Tired of Waylon, Willie, and the boys? Join me, Gordon Lockhart, for Beethoven, Bach, and the boys. Every Saturday from 8 to midnight on Lone Star Classical Music After Dark. Symphonies, concertos, and sonatas by composers such as Mozart, Tchaikovsky, and Bernstein. That's Lone Star Classical Music After Dark. Every Saturday from 8 to midnight on IRLoneStar.com. It's hard to interrupt her, isn't it? Yes, it is. She's lovely. She's and her got name, a massive tooth gap. And Ooh. her name is... <laughs> <laughs> that made a big difference in the oh, way she sounded, yeah. I know. Uh, with us today is, I'm so happy and so proud that uh, that he came up here well, and said you, he Cindy. agreed. Uh, You're so sweet. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mark, it was all about you. Uh, but uh, Derek Sinkfield is with us today. Hello. And I've known him since uh, 1992. I didn't know if you knew that was the year that we came we came there and... Uh, I was 10. Yeah, you That's were 10. Cool. So that was... in uh, Samantha was 8. My daughter was 8. And she was new there. And you come to a new church and you want the kids to get along. And a lot of times kids, it's hard for them to talk to the person that gets there and the new person. But they were so sweet and really took her in as a, into the group. And, and she couldn't wait to get to church the next Sunday because she loved all her friends. And I'd start taking them after church 
I would take them to different places and go. We saw Braveheart. I yeah, we, we went to movies and we went to bowling, I think, and we mm-hmm. did a lot of different th- stuff with them. And I'd yell at them and stuff. They, you know, they could get crazy and uh, always uh, jumping on them. But, but I love these guys. They were so just really into a lot of good things, from my perspective, uh, of things that they were doing. And um, But now everybody's like, you know, grown up and gone, gone away. But I do remember this one time that I was there and um, they were at church in the back in, in the woods they were smoking yep. this group not but me, now they were the older record. older <laughs> yeah so he was not he was not smoking yet. Sue is his mom uh, but but he ca- they came out and he smelled like it and the smoke was like wafting all around them and I said um, you know like what are y'all doing and they were going like oh, what we, what, please don't tell our parents please don't tell our parents and so I had him come all into a, a room there in the in the atrium and uh, near the atrium and uh, sat him down and said, look, you know, you guys, I could go tell your parents right now, and, but I'm not going to do that. This is, I'm going to give you all a, a, a lesson in, one, forgiveness and grace and all that, that uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell them. They were crying. They, they were so repentant and so scared that I felt like that's enough. They, you know, they've been through enough. And I said, this is the worst thing you ever did. It'll be okay. So, so I'm going to let it go. And, um. But Derek did remember, he he wasn't smoking. He I, just he smelled like it. But he was with them and hung out with them. And you know that's the deal is you you know by associating with them, I just assumed you had done the same thing. But um, anyway, it was it was a good experience. And everybody will remind me of that when I see these kids, they remind me of when that happened. So what was but, it Cindy said that drove you to the dark side? Now, that's now, all I'm wanting to now, know. Now I, I I read on his Facebook that he is agnostic, and I'm going like what? And uh, and I was listening to the different things he espoused, and and I was going like, "That's not my sweet little Derek." That was, you know. So and Derek learned sign language. I taught taught sign language, and he learned it so fast, and he Still was so it. good. And I thought this guy is going to be the interpreter. He's going to take my place when my get authentic. He's going to be the one to take my place. And so I was. Uh, Derek held a special place in my heart. I think you're so, so sweet. Oh, and you and mine. Well, I, and and I love you. No matter how we different differ in the way that we look at things i have that same value okay sure. so so my question is of course is uh when did you make the decision that you were not going to to believe in any kind of spiritual or supernatural thing yeah uh, being around probably around 15 16 was really when I started. yeah and what what caused that what i could literally blame my best friend uh oh, steve wonderful. smith he, uh, he, you know, I, I remember being in church with him, and uh, he actually went to Spring Woodlands or Oak Ridge North at that time. Quarterback mm-hmm. for the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I, there's a lot of Steve Smith. Oh, I'm can, sorry. There, <laughs> he's, mind. he's a drummer. There's a drummer. There's okay. Steve Smith. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, he has the, uh, yeah, it's, uh, num- I think, most common name in America. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I remember him starting to question, and I was like, you can do that. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he taught me the word devil's advocate. And uh, and then we started hanging out, and basically we just went off from there. And I don't know if I ever actually like went to church for you know God. If I just went there actually for the social aspect of it, mm-hmm. and that's one thing that I love church about is you know you know it's very good for people to be you know have a social belonging you know with other people in community. So I definitely credit um, religion and churches for that. You know, so I, you know, and so I just kind of, you know, had my own group, I guess. You mm-hmm. know, and I found my own community elsewhere. And, right. And um, you know, more I learned about, I guess, science and you know stuff. And I think you know, actually, what really drove me away was um, Christians themselves. Uh, sure. I, and uh, <laughs> I've actually, <laughs> uh, I've heard you know my sister, very religious. Uh, she's awesome. Um, she, you know, she had a, uh, I guess a DVD series or something about, uh, you know, Jesus saved me from your followers. And I'm like, oh, I connect with that completely, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, cause, um, it seems like nowadays that, uh, the Jesus I grew up with isn't the Jesus that people talk about now. And there's a complete disconnect. Like now I, you know, like I, I, I've always like read the Bible, you know, kind of like, because I'm going to get thrown scripture at me constantly, uh-huh. you know, for, you know, coming out as an atheist or I, I am so far away from any religion at all that I don't even know how to describe myself. I don't mm-hmm. really believe in anything. 
Um, so it, the agnostic so very hard. title is not correct, really. Agnostic is, you know, atheistic. gives credence, you know, like I was saying, it gives it to where there might be something. Mm-hmm. And I do not believe there might be anything. I do not believe in that at all. And it, it you know, and that's a luxury to not, to have that, you know, cause you want to, you know, like my brother passed away. So very, you know, I really want to think that when I pass away that I'll be with my brother, uh, you know, but I just, you know, I think that's just a comfort that to me isn't real, mm-hmm. you know, like my brother is with me in my heart. And I think that's more important to me, you know, well, sure. than anything. So yeah, that's basically what and, it comes down to. And so, you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, the more you study science, the more you get into that and all that, it's really hard then to read these fairy tales about creation. Mm-hmm. And I, I go like, hmm, but you, but you believe that there's a big bang theory or you believe that all these things kind of came together and just happened. And to me, that seems like it takes more faith and belief to believe that as well as believing that there is a, a God who created all of this. You know, like I said, it's the luxury, you know, to be atheist, you know, um, to be able to suspend any kind of yeah, having to worry yeah, about believing of, anything. you know, and, uh, and you don't have to even oh. go to church. Sheesh. But you go, to, but so, I, I, I've seen you go there. I've, I I've go, but you. I hang out in the atrium. You know, I you, don't go, you do that. I don't go into, the you class know, the, or anything. yeah, I, you know, and, you know, it doesn't, I don't have any need to really, I, I feel like hypocritical completely, you but know, you and I'll there? just sit there, you know. And talk to people that come by and Yeah, I hi. see, like I said, I love the social aspect of it. You know, right? I think it's great. I love seeing all the people and stuff, you know. And my daughter's religious, so it's very hard for me, you know. Uh, well, that was going to be my next question is, is Amber, are you taking Amber autumn. to church? I mean, Autumn. Yeah. Autumn, uh, you take her to church and yeah. she goes to classes and stuff. You know, I, it, like, I, I'd love, you know, I think people should be like Jesus, you know. And the I, one you read about in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. the one that I thought I knew, I right. guess. You, you knew know. him. You know well, him. you know, like I hear all these, you know, you know, things taken out of context. Sure. And, you know, um, and I think, you know, one of the main reasons that the Bible has been so, you know, being able to last so long is the how interpretive it is. You can, you, you know, the same people who are arguing for slavery use the same quotes as the people who are against it. But um, that doesn't, it, I don't see, you know, condemning the bible because the way people do it though, well right? that's that's just what I, you know like I, i'm not condemning the bible at all i just think that it's just something you know as a guideline you know you could definitely use it as that but as a guideline yeah okay. i just I, I just don't take it any further than that you know like the, a fundamentalist you know uh like the biggest i think threat to the church to christianity is from within it's to me exactly what you're saying I would Derek, agree. us fellow christians I start looking at them, and it, not me, you know, looking at them, and I cannot believe, you know, I don't agree with them in so many areas, and I look at how hateful they are, uh, many, many, and it, it turns me, and then I go back to the scriptures and and look at what Christ really is. There, it is so easy for me to look at others and discount what the heck. You mentioned something that has been so true of me in my uh, uh, church life not being able to say things or ask things that are on really everyone's mind mm-hmm. you know what how is that possible that this don't ask you know you don't believe you don't you know what uh, the ark all this stuff you don't follow that well i tell you you're going to hell in a basket those are things that i believe uh are endangering the church is the belief that uh you're you know don't question and you know Let's face it, Scripture has been around for so long, and it has withheld so many assaults from even people within the church that uh, God doesn't need us to tell people don't do that, don't whatever. Uh, the Bible and the Spirit will well, be there. Well, don't you think it would be a true statement to say that everybody at times Doubts. become yeah you know, doubts and and has an agnostic moment uh that that they don't know whether this is really real or not because there's nothing tactical or you know tangible about it and so they they 
wonder and then they see things how can God let things suffer how can God do this to my child how, you know and I've gone outside in the in the back and raised my fist to the stars and go like why I don't understand this I don't understand why you're doing this what is happening and why can't you answer the prayer that I've given you why is you know and all that and, and mothers across the, the nation have done the same thing and so we we do that but then you come back to what the prayer was that you gave and where that person was and, and blaming God for what that person got themselves into and where the situation that they're in and saying it's his fault. Why don't you heal them immediately? Why don't you? And all is is not how the whole structure is. You read that in the personality of God. It, he hates when somebody's hurting. He can't stand on somebody's hurting, but he, he will not force you to be good. He will not force you to believe in him. He doesn't hold a gun to your head to believe in him. He is the most pro-choice of of all because he's saying Free you will. make that decision mm -hmm. and and so I, I i just wonder though it we do that but then there's got to be a, a time that you come back and think well how can i not believe in him and i know you maybe have you haven't had that feeling again but i think you know like I, that's why i was wondering about your about your daughter when she looks at you she believes in you and everything that you say and what you and what you do and she knows that you're only there for her good mm -hmm. so that's what i believe god gave us our, our earthly family hood so that we could understand what's going on and why uh, why these things take place and that uh, we can relate to him it is not some mystical magical super you know natural being out there I don't I don't think but we're gonna hear more from from Derek when we get back and and I'll stop talking because I do want to <laughs> hear you how you feel you're listening to the Mark and Cindy show our guest is Derek Sinkfield and we're talking about uh, where he came to believe to not believe and why he came to, believe, to become an atheist so um, we'll be right back right after this hi i'm joyce with the corner pub in downtown conroe we're located at the corner of Simonton and North Main, just across the street from the courthouse. The week starts off Monday with Open Mic, hosted by Alan, and Tuesday night's Open Mic, hosted by Jeremy Bankhead. And on Thursday evening, McFarland Jams. There's nightly drink specials available every night, all night. And don't forget, live entertainment every weekend. To see a full list of events, visit our website at thecornerpubinconroe.com. So come join us at the Corner Pub, where the deli is open late. Hello, this is Dennis Nelson, inviting you to come with me through the doorway of imagination and into the theater of the mind. The Players Theater Company Old Time Radio Hour presents a play every Saturday night at 7 p.m. on Lone Star Internet Radio. Be it drama or comedy, thriller or love story, every exciting episode is carefully chosen straight from the golden age of radio and performed live by talented actors, musicians, and sound effects crew. Every sound you hear will be 100% live and homemade. Anything can happen. So join us, please, every Saturday night at 7 p.m. for the Players Theatre Company Old Time Radio Hour, right here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Welcome back, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We are here with Derry. I, I want to say Sinkfeld. Sinkfield. Sinkfield. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm trying to get Seinfeld in there. Sinkfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, common. Uh, very interesting. And we've been talking all around him. And Derek's just kindly sitting there, nodding or whatever. And uh, <laughs> uh, the the problem I think everybody has with respect to a desire we have to, oh, I'm going to change Derek's mind for the best. And Derek's over there, oh, my goodness, please give me a break. No way on earth are we going to change anything. There's a scripture in the Bible which, you know, is uh, many people, especially uh, uh, atheists, would say, yeah, it's nice stuff. But it says, no one can say Jesus is Christ without the Spirit. 
and no mm-hmm. one with the Spirit would ever say Jesus is not Christ. We're not going to change, but I am interested, as we say, uh, in people who something happens in their life. What I'm gathering here is you were never, you never felt a closeness to uh, Christ, or yeah, I don't but, think so. I think it was more, you know, community. You know, right. and having uh, that support group. And I, you know, you went to church because my parents, parents for sure. Same here. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I really didn't have a choice in the matter. Yeah. You know, and you know that's one thing I will give my daughter a choice. You know, like mm-hmm. you know, like I said, I don't condemn Christianity or, you know, and I think it does great good. You know, um, I think being fundamentalist uh, in any religion is bad, and I think that's that's what pushes people away from right. religion I agree. is trying to take the bible completely literally which yeah it's not you know even jesus spoke in parables right yeah and you know people and I, i've heard it about church you know the bible is not uh interpretive i mean it says what it says give me a break why are there so many different groups out there if it oh yeah be in- the different sex for sure okay. well as long as you know i i know that people have used the hypocrisy of, of people that go to church My as a way to keep from having to go to church mm. because why would they go hang out with the hypocrites and why would they go out and go and hang out with all these people that are espousing one thing and they live another life well th- the church is for the sinners and the people that come there and that there are people that are that are wrong and people that are doing things wrong and it is but it is something that we co- come together and we were commanded to to come together and to worship and to worship him and i know people like to take that as well and say like yeah, i can do it anywhere well of course you're supposed to be able to do it everywhere but there's a time to come together for the community and for the thing that draws you even is that it is a family and it should be and there's some churches that are not they're very cold and they don't say anything but there's some that are very open and, and you go and you look for a church home and it's like looking for a home you walk in and you're like i could be here and spring woodlands and, and grace crossing afforded that because you walk in and you feel like they want you to be there and everybody's very friendly and and uh, they have food to eat and so it's, it's really good yeah. but um for children especially they're growing up and as long as you now if she hears the duplicity of you know like you say one thing and she's going and the church is saying one thing and how how are you going to talk to her about that you can let sue do it <laughs> uh, no no no. it'll be between her and i good but good. it's when she asks me you know i'm mm-hmm. not going to force anything on her it's you know i'm going to let her come to her own conclusions but i think it, you know going to church like with the social aspect is good for her she's making friends that's where i met some of my best friends right right uh, who are still with me today right um you know, and they're actually atheists now. Uh, so wonderful. <laughs> let me spreading I, that let me, joy. I, I need mm-hmm. this for my own benefit. I, okay. I was reading this morning, and it there, you know, there's a difference between joy and happiness. You mm-hmm. you're not going to be happy if bad things are happening to you. It's impossible, but you can still feel a sense of joy over what you've got to look forward to or or whatever. I read something this morning, and it mm-hmm. wasn't in the Bible, but I someone was paraphrasing something, and he said. Uh, there is no joy in the soul of one who forgets what God prizes. Do you have a sense of joy in everyday life, even when things are going bad? That's yeah, sure. In, in what? Yeah, definitely. In, oh, what? Do I have? Same thing. Everybody else does. You know, I get joy when my daughter does something awesome. You know, like I, I get uh, you know joy when I open a door for somebody. Just being nice, I right. think, just gives me. That's good. You know, but when so. things are bad, what do you have? When things are bad, I I have myself and I have my friends and I have my family. I don't know, you know, to me I don't need anything else. I just need, yeah. you know, people. I have my daughter, I have my dog. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's and that's the comfort to me is I that, see. you know. And yeah. I believe that that God <clears throat> gives us a sense of family whether it's you know you may not have children you may not have ever had children but but you have friends and you have Mm -hmm. nieces nephews family with within the circle to understand what that love is and how they respond to you and and you see that with your daughter like you created that life Mm -hmm. and god has the same sense i think on on probably a grander bigger scale maybe like a grandparent but he created he created life so he's he loves this life that we have he loves that 
he loves us like his kids and like you do her you have a better understanding of how god loves because he, you would do anything for that child you would die for that child if that would help that child and, and keep him from keep that child from dying so you have the sense that god's trying to convey to us that he has for us and that but you believe that it stops with you and there's no other there's no nothing past you for her to to mm, look to no it's only you yeah, pretty much. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, in what you're just talking about, like to me, you know, God didn't make us. It was a big pain theory. You know, it we just happened to hit the luck spot when it came to our orbit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I think you know, even before time, parents have always had love for their child before you, we you even knew what Christianity was. So I don't, you know, that concept to me is just nothing you know it's just that's what we have well i can understand you can't go back and understand i mean there's nothing to go back to and grab because you're not believing that any of that happened anyway yeah yeah so after life is you don't have in other words your brother's alive in you but when you're gone you'll be alive somewhere else will you oh i'll be nothing you'll be nothing i'll be absolutely you'll be alive in your daughter yeah i will live on and will she carry your brother with you yeah because i talk about him okay you know that's how i think that's pure uh you know true immortality is remembering that's all we have really it's memories Right. You know, and so keep pictures, tell people about the people you loved. That's and why I listen to stories from older people. and Martin right. Luther King Day on Monday, stuff. same idea. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, to, to remember, and and, uh, and that's good, and that's really, and that's great. And the, the Bible is there that tells us that, uh, that, that a lot of the events that happen in the Bible, secular history coincides with that does that mm-hmm. help you in any way feel like maybe these things did happen or or do you feel like okay those all those things could happen and these guys wrote stuff down but it doesn't mean that that a god was overseeing it and making sure that what they were saying would help us and with our salvation and going to heaven yeah basically i don't believe that, that. i think you know especially don't believe anything that came out of the dark ages you know at all and uh you know the bible's been rewritten numerous times and i think it's you know Especially during those hard times back in history, you know, a bi- the Bible was good, saved us in the dark ages. Yeah. You know, so. It's well, been translated many times. Right. The, the deal is, in every translation, there are 32 plus writers who, over a period of 3,000 years, they didn't even know one another mm-hmm. for the most part. They all wrote something, and whenever you compile it, it all points to Jesus Christ. I don't have any faith in me. I have no faith in others. They're going to disappoint me. I'm going to disappoint sure. people. But if I have to think of something to put my hope on, instead of just me, here's how I feel. When I look at Scripture and I read it, I do have a sense, and it sounds you cannot argue spiritual things with someone who no, doesn't right. believe it. I realize that. But I feel a sense that Christ says, you know, if you seek me, I'm going to be found by you. I feel like I'm found, and that's what I have and i feel more like hanging my hat on that concept of all of these writers i believe they were divine inspired Mm -hmm. instead of me saying you know i believe it all happened by a force called luck or whatever yeah you know and i you know i do i think you can find spirituality in a lot of different things and i think it exists Mm -hmm. you know i just don't throw my hat in with any of it you know basically so i just you know i I mean i guess i have spiritual moments but more like looking at the stars and you know looking at you know how amazing we've advanced and you know just the lifetime of the earth being so well uh, uh, just humanity being so small Mm -hmm. um in the grand scheme of things i want to know when you said i i read about a jesus in the bible Mm -hmm. and when i was younger and that was the jesus that i i came to i came to love respect this jesus and then in somewhere that that was convoluted by what what people said or what Mm -hmm. what went on you've had a lot of traumatic things in your life happen to you sure and 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 many of us many of us do and so we a lot of us say that that are christians say i rely on my faith to get me through that and and i think that there was so much you you had a strong upbringing in the church Mm -hmm. and there were all your activities a lot of those activities were all surrounded by the church and but those traumatic happenings happened anyway and you weren't protected from those does any of those things you know sway you one way or the other or make you realize you know like well if there was a god and if all that stuff they were saying all that praying that what they say we're supposed to do didn't help me in those situations why should i put stock in that believe it put my hat on it not at all that so that, that didn't have anything to do Mm-mm. with do with it no well it it because a lot of people say that's what you know like drove them away but 
And then the people themselves, they're so hypocritical. I understand. I certainly understand that. And sometimes you go like, I'm not going back there and listening to that guy profess something that, that I don't think he believes himself. You know, or, mm-hmm. or, and we, we project onto a lot of the members stuff that we're saying they believe and they're like that. And this is, you know, and really a lot of them, we don't know each other. That's what I liked about you. And, and I hope you liked about me because I, I never tried to act different than I was in the car as I was yelling at y'all as we got into the church um, and um, that, that things were going, you know, something would happen that we still acted the same way. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I, you know, actually, I credit my mom a lot. You oh, know, yes. With uh, how, you know, because she, you know, she hates that I'm an atheist, you know. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> but, like, she's not different either. But no. she she is, you know, she actually te- teaches the the Jesus that I knew constantly, oh. all the time, you know. And um, so I always ask her questions, you mm-hmm. know, constantly. Um, and, and my brother-in-law, Eddie Boyer, right. is great. And he will uh, indulge me in any questions sure, that he, I have. You know, yeah. he, I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure he likes it. But it's the hypocrisy or the, the things that bother me and what I meant by that, saying that, you know, the Jesus I knew has been changed is by the interpretations that I hear. Like, for example, um, I'm hearing congressmen and stuff saying, you know, quoting the Bible, like, um, you know, uh, give a man a fish, he feeds for, he eats for a oh, day, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, uh, teach a man to fish. Well, to me, you know, he eats forever. Uh, to me, that means, uh, hey, maybe we should start training people, you know, like the government can actually do that, you know, and if you take away the fishing rod or, you know, like food stamps and stuff like that, then what did you just do, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so stuff like that, you know, and, and, and with the interpretations, you know, in the different writings, mm-hmm. like the... Uh, Whenever they're taking, you know, Jesus is going to uh, get crucified. Everybody carries a sword, and then whenever they, um, whenever they get there, they're like, "Hey, put your swords down, or everybody's going to die." Well, there's ten ways that that's been interpreted or changed. One is that it says, "Those who live by the sword die by the sword." The other one is, uh, "Those who draw the sword die by the sword." So there's a huge difference that you can argue between the words "draw" and "live." So either he was saying that, you know, you should never have a sword when if he spoke as live, yeah. or you could look at it and say drawing, meaning, hey, there's a whole bunch of Romans here with yeah. swords and you're going to die. You know, the, the thing there is the fact that he just told him, I'm supposed to die. Put away your sword. This is supposed yeah. to yeah. happen. And yeah. that's another. Inter- but I know what you, you see mean. what I mean. Yeah. There are, you take anything and what did that come from? And I don't know how many times in the Bible it mentions and Christ says, I do not want you to get in these picky arguments over things. Paul said, you right. know, what I fear the most is this, that you're going to let something complicated take you away from the simplicity of love in Christ Jesus. And that's Well, I think that's, that's so what true. drove him crazy. The Jewish law became where you couldn't take six steps because they had, mm-hmm. had it so, uh, so interpreted the way that would help the leaders and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. aside from all that, I mean, if you just remove the people and mm-hmm. look at the pure word that was very simple— love one another the way you you want them to love you and uh and believe in him and there were simple simple things that he wanted us to do and i think that's what if we can just get rid of the people part of it mm-hmm. and look to the spiritual part of it i'll probably do a lot better but you're listening to the mark and cindy show with our guest derek sinkfield and we will be right back after this don't go away please don't go away special to make it in the business world. Montgomery County is fortunate to have a diverse pool of industries and businesses. Join me, Cassandra Roshan, Director of Membership Development with the Greater Conroe, Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce for Mind Your Business. I will sit down with our chamber members to talk history, community involvement, and get some tips of the trade on how to be successful in our current business environment. Tune in on the third Tuesday of each month at 11 a.m. to hear from our members of the Greater Conroe, Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce talk about their professional experiences. I guarantee you will walk away with insight of how to mind your business. The Conroe Art League is a nonprofit entity promoting the visual arts in Montgomery County. They've evolved over the last 49 years into one of the premier artist groups in the Greater Houston area. The Conroe Art League is now permanently housed in the 100-year-old, recently remodeled Maidley Building in historic downtown Conroe. 
Exhibits of local artists, sculptures, and painters are changed periodically in the downstairs gallery with admission free to the public. Art classes and demonstrations in a variety of media are provided in the upstairs studios. The mission of the Conroe Art League is to encourage artistic development and cultivate an appreciation of the visual arts through education, exhibitions, and community outreach. For more information, call area code 936-756-9572 or visit their website at www.conroeartleague.com. Derek, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, you no are wonderful. And you know what your mother is, is uh, every day she reads the scripture, is uh, if you bring up a child in the way he should go, when he's old, he'll not depart from it. And you're still a baby. Oh, so, you. you know, there's a lot that you've got to experience and do. And, and your mom's going to have faith in all of that. That, mm. you know, you're, gonna, you're going to, uh, to go through a lot of changes. Yeah, she wants me to, you know, come back to Christ. But... But just to the one that you knew, the one that you walked with yeah, early. I mean, as we were speaking earlier, you quoted the golden rule, you know, which is found in every religion. Right. Every single one. Right. Um, you know, and I, like I said, I like, you know, if it is simple, you know, like when it's not fundamentalism, you know. Right. So I, that's what I mean. Like, that's why I don't hate religion. I, just for myself, that's not something that I, you know, will buy into. You know, I hate I, to I, say, I hate to say religion. I, I, it's just, it's, it's a belief in in what is good for you. I think the one that created mm-hmm. you know what's best for you, like the guy that made the car, and that this is the one that's going to, to give you the rules on what to do with your car to get the best out of it. Mm-hmm. And so that's who I'm gonna believe in, is the one who created me. So I, I understand, and I, you're so brave and courageous to come on and talk about this. I know this is not, you know, real easy to do, right? Oh, I don't mind at all, I definitely, you know, it, it really is hard for people just to actually come out. It, it took me forever. I used to just say on my Facebook profile that I was Christian, you mm-hmm. know, because to me, I do actually live like Jesus, you know. That's um, great. Just, you know, by being a nice person. You I know? just would you I wish you'd that. believe in your father. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it, I, th- I, I think that's great. I think that uh, that your mom is extremely proud of you, your brother, mm-hmm. your sister, and, and, and all that. They yeah, love they're you. awesome with it. They yeah. are. They're very sweet. Let yes. me say this one thing, Derek. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how many uh, atheists are out there. I know of one who is very vocal, and I never bring it up because I know it's useless, but he mm-hmm. constantly brings it up and bad, badgers me. And I read about something atheist, you know, how can you tell? Well, first of all, they think they're superior. Their spiritual idea is better than anybody else's, and they're very defensive. You are the direct opposite. opposite. You That's are a cool. kind, a person who is not, you, you're, you're com, not, com, the word's not complete I'm looking for, but you're very at ease with yourself. And uh, that if it, it's Thank the you. opposite of that, that many Christians, and I am that way sometimes mm-hmm. too, in the same, oh, look at me, you know, and that is a turn well, off. Well, we should take everyone. a lesson we from do. what he's saying, that we push people out. We do. That we want people to, to be there, and we may be our worst enemies uh, by the way we, we treat them or the way we talk and, and the t- maybe two lives that we're living. So Encouraging word. Do you have uh, one or? Uh, this is the Just story go for that uh, that hurt Sunday in church. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, this girl uh, Mary was worked for this man who was extremely abusive about the way his, his conversations around her, and uh, made fun of her for her Christianity, and you know cursed and did all that around her, and uh, mocked you know God and and the whole thing around her. And she would go home and pray. She said she prayed for two years every single day for him to understand and to come to someone to come to him, someone that would help him understand that what he's doing is hurting himself or anybody else. And she was worried about him, not her. So for two years, and then she came into the office one day and there was the envelope. Now you think, oh, of course it's gonna be like fairy tale ending and all that. But it was, and she opened the envelope and he apologized for how abusive he'd been to her. And that, that by doing all that, he realized what he looked like to everybody else because his wife, he started going to church with his wife and the kids, and he started hearing the story, and he's been convicted, and he's trying to, to, to do more what Jesus wanted him to do and live that kind of life, so he apologized. Now, that was 
that's been through the Bible about even God. When you pray and you pray over and over, it's not in your time maybe that you want it to happen in like that, but it, it happens. And so a constant amount of prayer would even change like the king's mind that that, uh, that the woman, the wife of uh, someone who's enslaved that came to the king and he got so sick of her coming to him every day he's like get the guy out of there i'm sick of her, her coming to me every day and and god put that story in there to understand that i want you to talk to me every day about this and we'll get this we'll get this right but it may not be in your time because i see what's going on and what the future holds so i will i will uh, work with you here so i just thought that was a great story is that prayer does work i believe in it so much and that uh and i am so happy that uh, you came here and and I know that your mom is so happy that you're here with with us. I told her I would be very nice to you and very sweet to you. I was yeah, sweet, right? You were, yeah, it's very easy to be nice. To I love you, you Derek. Appreciate that, Derek. I love you, Derek. I love Derek. So special. Okay, everybody. Uh, it's a beautiful day out there. Gorgeous day. Go out and have a good time because some wicked cold weather come to us. Woo! But uh, have a good time. Enjoy. Smile. Make somebody happy. Love somebody today. And you know what? God loves you, and God's got this. Well, it's Mark and Cindy, they've got a morning show. Every day I listen in. We're going to talk about what's going on in town. You never know who's going to come around. Hey, everyone. This is Tina, your host from Retro Saturdays. I wanted to invite you to visit the Lone Store Studios here in downtown Conroe, Texas. We're all volunteers here, and we need your help in serving the Montgomery County area. Radio media is a fun field to be in. Lone Star Internet Radio serves Montgomery County with news, current events, 